All right, everybody, let's talk about V-bits. So we're going to have about a 15, a 30, a 60, and a 90 degree V-bit today. And I'll show you the V-bits. This is the 60 degree 302 from Carbide 3D. It's got a half inch um, width. The 90 degree with the insert, uh, it's got an inch and a quarter width. Uh, just take note of how wide the 90 degree is over the 60 and the 45 and then also the 30 degree and I'll show you a 15 in a second. This is the 30 degree 45773 from Amana. Um, quarter inch shank, quarter inch cutting width. And then the 15 degree V-bit. Notice how skinny it is. It's very fragile. I've broken them and um, it's got a quarter inch width as well. Um, I, uh, I don't know how long this is. Um, I'm not sure I would ever cut this deep. Um, it's probably about an inch or so and I just I just can't imagine cutting that deep with with this bit. Um, it not not all at once but over passes. I just think that's yeah I'm not sure I would ever do that unless I'm doing like a a long chamfer or something like that but anyway um, all right so here's what I've kind of got prepared um, I can show you everything here so these will start here at these small letters and we'll work our way up to the larger ones and then some other little fun stuff um, chamfers and cutting along profile lines and things like that so, first thing is these letters are, let's turn the vectors off, uh, right, they're not going to turn off. Sorry, let me make sure that this is going to work. Okay. All right. So, first off, these letters are half an inch tall and there's 0 .5, 0 0.05 inches between the vector lines. And that's how a V-bit works. So it's going to plunge down um, as far as it, as long as it takes to get to meet both sides. The, the V-bit touches on this vector and this vector. Or it's one vector, but both sides of the vector. Um, so I can show you the 15, um, I think I have it set up at 0 0.05 depth of cut, and, uh, yeah, so I'll show you here. So obviously, as we kind of get, I said that the 15 is the skinniest, then the 30, the 60, the 90, so on these small letters, the 15 is obviously going to be carving the deepest and then up to the 90 so 15 degree v-bit needs to plunge down 0.2 almost 0.2 to touch both sides and then the 30 degree would be next and 0.1 the 60 degree 0 0.04 which is very shallow and then finally the 90 which we talked about is the widest 0 0.02 you'd probably barely be able to see that um, so honestly personally the 30 degree would probably be what I would use on a letter this size maybe the 60 um, I'd have to do some te I'd probably do some testing if it was going to be a lot of a big project or whatever but um, cool so yeah that's about that for those letters let's move on to the these letters are an inch and a half tall and 0.18 between this vector and this vector. And you can see that the 15 degree is not the bit to use on this. Uh, point, point 0.8, point 0.9, it almost goes all the way through this. It might actually. Um, yeah, nah. I would not use a 15 degree view bit on a letter of this size, even a 30 degree point. 0.3 inches deep. Um, 
kind of getting getting up there. Now it's not going to do that all at once. You still set your depth of cut and everything, but um, it's still getting cutting very deep. I think a letter of this size, I would use a 60 degree um, 0.13. Cool. Yeah, and then the 90 is still fairly shallow on a letter of this size. 0.1, it might work, but I just don't think um, a 90 degree is what I would use on this. Um, now these larger letters, so these are four inches tall, and there's 0.46 inches between um, the sides of the vector. So obviously this 90, this 15 degree view bit is going to carve. It's going to carve all the way through. It almost needs to go. It's only a quarter of an inch wide, so it's almost twice the width of that bit. Um, yeah, it's just gonna it's gonna take forever to carve just one letter. And the thirty degrees, well, it doesn't carve all the way through, but um, it would be pretty close. Um, sixty degree, still pretty deep, almost half an inch, and then the ninety degree. Yeah, the 90 degree on on these large letters. Um, that's what I would. That's what I would use. Or you could even set a flat bottom carve, and I'll show you on my other project how I how I set that up. And you would you would use a um, you would use a roughing tool to. Um, to clear out a lot of this, a lot of this waste to speed things up, or it would, or you could have a flat bottom anyway, rather than the the V, and I'll show you that in just a minute. Um, the next thing I use V bits for sometimes I just have a a line. Say this is this is the line I've got, or I've got a circle, and I don't want to create an offset. I want it exactly that. Uh, I have everything set up how I want it to do, but I still want that V. V look for it. So I set up a profile cut and I set a, a, a depth for it. Still set my depth of cut and I set a max depth. So it's going to do, so I set it at 0.1 and my final depth is 0.2. I set it along it. You can set it inside, outside, whatever you want. Um, so it's going to take two passes to go around, but the end result is this V carve around a using a profile toolpath. Cool. Same thing here. Um, sometimes you've just got like um, I did a monogram uh, cutting board inlay, so I had an S, and then I had a line, and I was like, well, what do I what am I going to do with that? And so I just did a profile pass. I set it at 0.2. I cut it perfectly, the exact line I wanted. And uh, um, yeah, same depth. And then I was able to put the inlay in there. Now the other thing I use V-bits for is chamfers. So you can see how this... Um, this is, has this profile, this 90 degree profile. I'll show you how I set that up. So um, it kind of took me some playing around with, but um, I, uh, I made this box around the, on the outside of it. And I said, profile cut to the outside. Um, say your uh, let's see. Yeah, point one. Um, you kind of got to just play around with it. I'd have to think about the math and and what, how I'd want it. But anyway, I set the point two and um, told it to cut on the outside, and this was my my result. And you can use any of the V bits to do it. Just be careful with those more fragile ones. Um, or you can just use a trim router and a chamfer bit, which is always an option. Um, cool. So I hope that helps. Now, 
let's uh, talk about this sign I'm making. So I think I used a 60 degree B bit B bit for everything on this. Um, now I set up a flat bottom V carve. So with an eighth inch end mill, so I get a flat a flat surface in here and a 60 degree V bit. So I get I still get that chamfer. And these little bits that the simulation has, they're there, but they're so small, like a little bit of sandpaper will get rid of them. Um, yeah, so I just set it up 0.35 is how deep I wanted it. And uh, same with these, these larger letters. The reason I did that was because it carved, it would have carved all the way through my through my piece if uh, I didn't set up a flat bottom carve and I don't I didn't have the 90 degree V bit at the time um, so a 90 degree V bit probably would have been the tool to use for this but um, the look of it I like and with the flat bottom cool so let's talk about this one is a little bit more complicated this flat bottom portion because it has this piece in the middle of this plane. Um, I will show you what I did for that. So the first thing I did, I have all these offsets um, so that I can get the look I wanted. So the first thing I did was the clearance toolpath. I didn't want the plane to be a quarter of an inch tall because it would have been fragile it, it, it it's the pieces are thin on it and a quarter of an inch would have been a little fragile for me so i i think the whole um about a tenth of an inch and i still get the depth that i wanted cool so first thing i did i set up an offset so i wanted the chamfered look for it like i have like i have here so the first thing i did i set an offset and again i had to play with this a bit to get it to how I wanted it. I, did, I don't, there's probably some amount you knew, but um, just trial and error worked just fine. Cool. So the first thing I did was I cleared inside of this vector. No, nothing special, just a clearance tool path. Um, this guy. The next thing I did was I, I set it, so I cleared that first one to 0.1. And now I want to clear out the airplane. So I started it at 0.1, and my final depth is 0.21. Cool. And it gave me the, it cleared everything around the airplane. And, um, yep. The final thing I did was this V curve. So I'd set. Um, I'd been clearing everything to this vector um, here. And now I want to do a uh, V carve with, um, I'm sorry, and uh, yeah, yeah, V carve. Um, and I cleared everything from this vector that I've been using out down to point uh, I had it at point two one so it was the same depth but um, and then I used the V bit to get the chamfer so so that middle vector was up to here and then I just did a V carve between here this this vector here and let's see if I can turn on the vectors. Why aren't they on? Yeah, so you can get a kind of a look how that. So it wasn't carving very much on on the outside here, um, but and I probably could have used a uh, profile pass as well, um, but this seemed to work just fine. 
cool. Um, yeah, so that's just another thing you can use your V-Bits for um, to get these other kind of cool looks. Um, yeah, uh, somebody else asked about a 90 degree V-Bit with a quarter inch shank and when they would use that. Um, honestly, I've never used one and don't really want to speak on it. Um, I've only used the one with a larger... Um, I think they're fairly stable bits, but they only got have like a short, short cutting height, like a quarter of an inch or something like that. Maybe if you're doing shallow cuts, um, uh, or only want to cut, uh, say you wanted to cut, uh, yeah, I honestly don't know. Um, I don't know when I would use that versus a in place of a one with a wide one, unless maybe you're doing a really deep cut. If you're doing at the bottom of a um, something that's only like half an inch wide um, and your large diameter V-bit won't fit down in, in the place, that's that's kind of the only thing I would, I would, rec I would, I would use it for. Um, but honestly, I've, I've not used one. Um, cool. So I hope that helps. Let me know if you have questions. I can revise this as, as we need to, or if I've kind of, uh, this is just my interpretation again, and what I've figured out. Um, if you can remember that V bits cut, um, in between, they go down the depth of, um, the width they go down to the depth that the V-bit touches both sides of the vector. Um, then that should help you. Uh, yeah, again, there's other videos out there, but I figured I'd make another, so it's not specific to CarveCo, but um, certainly can help. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.